Bonjour, bonsoir, dear friends. Bienvenue, welcome to JCD Live in the heart of beautiful Napa Valley tonight. We have an enormous treat for you. The treat of the year, an incredible lady, an amazing inspiration, a great aspiration to be, born in America in the beautiful town of Maine. Went to college, studied literature, of course, and performing arts. Exported herself on the other side of the Atlantic to go to the UK. And there, life started again with a new phase, playwriting and bar management, to buying wine for a great organization, to then mastering the master of wine, of course, and becoming one of those illustrious members of that closed phenomenal society. After that, of course, rank wine, judge wine, wrote a lot about wine, wrote a book in between, and joined as editor-in-chief of The Wine Advocate. Dear friends, this lady is extraordinary. She can taste more wine than I could drink, certainly, in a year. And she is extraordinary. So use tonight as this amazing inspiration, as a path to follow, and if you want to be like her, it's easy. Just be very attentive because in life, everything is possible. Lisa, welcome. Hey, how are you? Voila. <laughs> Thank you. What an intro. I well, don't need to say anything now. I'm just like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so Lisa, this is the tradition. We start with this lovely JCB to welcome you in the world of the live. So thank you for being with us today. My pleasure. Thank you. I, I thought you'd never ask. Oh, <laughs> I never Dude. would wait for too long. So dear friends, we've had an amazing relationship with Lisa. As you all know, she ranks wine, but even more importantly, she has an incredible history. So Lisa, many friends today are with us because they want to learn how they can become you. <laughs> Oh, no, <laughs> it's a long, terrifying path. Um, yeah, yes, it's, no. <laughs> it's an exciting one. So how do you study from playwriting and literature to become, you know, in charge of a wine bar and then move from there? How does that work? It's a good question because I think, you know, when I started studying, I didn't even know the job I have now existed. It wasn't even on my radar. I wasn't even that interested in wine when I started college. I, um, I grew up in Maine, which is a state, not a town. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, it's both because in Maine, you know, it's one of the most beautiful states. It is, yeah. It's very, very rural, but there's not a lot of wine there. Um, you, you couldn't possibly um, <laughs> fit a spinifera there. Uh, so somebody will come back and say, I'm growing it. <laughs> but, there's a lot of sheep and it, no, goats. There's a lot of, yes, it, it gets very cold in the winter. That's the challenge. Um, and, you know, with the sub-zero temperatures, um, a, a species like Vitis vinifera would, would not last for long. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, coming from, from that background, I, I went to college, um, Colby College in Maine. I studied what I loved which yes. was literature. I loved reading, you know, ever since I was very little. I gravitated towards books, mainly because there wasn't anything else to do in me. Um, and well, and you have a very intellectual mind. I could see philosophy, literature being, yeah. you know, inhabiting. <laughs> yeah, well, um, uh, but, you know, I, I, I loved stories. I loved storytelling. I loved writing. I yes. loved reading. Um, and, you know, I suppose that's that's the the key message in everything that I've done to get to where I am today is that I've always followed my heart mm -hmm. and I've always done things that I love. Um, and so, you know, from from the get go in college, you know, um, I had no idea what I was going to do. With but how did you end up from literally studying playwriting in a great place in London to then Managing wine bar. I mean, how does that work? <laughs> well, that that came about by needing to pay the rent. Okay. <laughs> and wine helps. <laughs> Playwriting doesn't pay very well, um, at least in the, the initial stages. Uh, and it's, it's very difficult to sort of crack in there. Um, I, I had a few plays being produced on the yes. fringe in London. 
Um, but oh, congratulations. I, well, yeah. Wow. But I needed, you know, I needed an income. And so a friend of mine was managing a wine bar in London. And uh, he said, well, you know, you, you can, you know, work part time at the wine bar. Went, oh, OK, yeah, no, that would be, you know, fun. It's better than a pub. <laughs> pulling pints which I've done That's for um, sure. so uh you know I, I went and started working the wine bar and I started you know learning a little bit about yeah. wine and the more I learned the more fascinated I got I guess because you know it it appealed to me intellectually a little bit like literature did a little bit like you know studying Shakespeare and, and mm -hmm. also performing arts um I studied uh, so I, I really love the, the geekiness of wine. Yes. Um, but I also love the stories behind the wines and how, you know, the more that you learned about wine, you could unravel a story right there in the glass. And for me, that was intriguing. That kind of opened my eyes. And so when the opportunity came up to, to be the manager of that wine, uh -huh. bar, I was like, I, well, at first I should say, I completely bluffed my way through the interview. Um, it was, um, and you said you already knew wine. Did you? I did. <laughs> were you already drinking a lot of wine, or was it no? Kind of a new <laughs> it was. It was a very new thing. I knew. I just about knew that there were three colors of wine. <laughs> oh, that's great. You see, everything is possible. Now, were you tempted to write a play on wine? Because. I'm sure your imagination was going crazy for ideas and playwriting. You know, what I wanted to write was a sitcom. <laughs> I thought, you know, particularly managing a wine bar, I was at the wine bar. I wound up being at the wine bar for about six years. And being at the wine bar, it was just, you know, in Pimlico, it was underground in the basement. It was um, mostly for, you know, wealthy people who lived around that area. This is, you know, uh, near Westminster. Um, it also, we had people coming in from Scotland Yard because that was just down the road, the Houses of, of Parliament. And so you had all these characters coming together and it was hysterical. I mean, the, the, some of the, the people that you got coming in, it was a little bit like Cheers in London. Um, because everybody, we knew everybody. And it would be still a great show. So maybe that's the well, next thing you do. There you go. <laughs> so now, how did you go from managing a wine bar to then really getting a full time career in wine, right? That was the springboard to it? Yeah. Well, it's, uh, after bluffing my way through the interview yes. and saying I knew a lot about wine and I could, you know, really handle this job. I had to sign up for WSET classes wow. so that I could, you know, uh, walk the walk as well as talk the talk. Yeah. Um, so yes, I, I straight away study, started studying at the Wine and Spirit Education Trust in London, which um, was great because they they provide and they they still provide this ladder. Um, yeah. And so I started at the bottom with the certificate, and I worked all, all my way all the way up to the diploma. Impressive. Um, and then you know by that time um, I had actually left uh, the wine bar um, by the time I got my diploma and I was working um, for a very fine wine merchant, um, Corny and Vera of course. in London, um, doing on trade sales yeah. um, and uh, really getting a palate for the good stuff by now. Well, and, I, and I love that because someone who writes about wine who actually sold wine and bought wine in a bar. Now, when did you realize, Lisa, that you had a true sense of taste and flavor and you really got it oh um well i knew i had a good nose i always had a good nose um even you know as a child i pick up things you know that, were you that smelling people. anything yeah you yeah. know i used to spend a lot of time in the woods because like i said in maine there's not a lot else to do and yeah. you know spell, smelling the different you know uh flora that was there um flowers um in the kitchen all the time a lot yeah. of home cooking um, and then you, you pick up aromas and you're, you're able to name all of those aroma compounds. You know what clothes smell like, you know what lavender smells That's like, it. you know what mint smells like. And so when, once you're able to isolate and remember those, those aromas, it becomes very easy to unravel the story in the wine. Mm -hmm. When you know certain grape varieties give up certain aromas, when you know that certain regions yes. have different profiles. 
Um, and for me, that was the fascinating thing that, that kind of made me want to, to go on and do the Master of Wine, which of course is, you know, um, you, you have to go through this very rigorous exam. Where you <laughs> this do... is like incarceration, right? Yeah. You have to be in wine room for many, many years in order just to focus. You do. I you mean, do. That's... I, I, in fact, I didn't know what I was getting myself into when I started the Master of Wine. I thought, well, you know. Dear friends, this is the big deal. This is <laughs> beyond Harvard double PhD here. This is the impossible to achieve. How many graduates a year? Uh, I think we're just over 300 now. Uh, oh, no, not per year. Per year is 20. Yeah, yeah, 10. about 20. Uh, yeah. 10, Very yeah. prestigious. So when did you realize, okay, I'm going to go further than WRCT. I'm going to go really for the big one. Uh, well, yeah, it was about that time when when I was, uh, you know, uh, learning more. The more you sort of work your way up the, the fine wine ladder when you start, you know, really isolating regions um, in your head and, you know, even producers and single vineyards and really sort of honing in on those nuances, it just makes you hungry yeah. for more. Um, it's like, you know, hungry or thirsty, thirsty okay. as well, <laughs> I like thirsty. but you know, your brain, your yeah. brain is hungry for that, that intellectual stimulation that you get, you know, when you're, you're learning all of these things and when you're able, you have this ability, this developing ability. And so it's, it's like the ultimate challenge for yourself to yes. be able to sort of put yourself almost like Olympic training, um, through this, this, um, training to get to this point where you can do this blind tasting exam over a period of, of three days where you're you're you know having to say everything from the grape variety to the region to the quality all of these um you know vintage the potential to age all of these things you need to be able to do that without yes. knowing anything about the wine which is amazing so how many years did it take you to do the masters of wine about five years which is quick because yeah. many people go 8, 10, 12, 15, and still fail, dear friends. So is it the time you got into a romance in the UK, maybe? Oh, oh. you know what? I'd already I want to get to that emotional I, side. I'd had one romance already in the UK. That was kind of what pulled me back when I um, graduated from college in Maine. And then I um, decided to come back and pursue playwriting in London. I had one romance, and then that one ended. Um, and then, so when I was managing the wine bar, mm. that's when my my true love, <laughs> who I'm still yeah, with, but today my He's husband amazing, walked in. The way. Yes, he actually used to work for me. Really? Yes, yes. Nothing better than slaving your husband. Yeah, I know. Or future I know. husband. Yeah, I never let him forget that. Uh, so yes. Uh, but it's, it's interesting because he's in another world. He's in finance. He's in finance. He was just about to go into finance, um, and he needed a, an in-between job, which is why I was I was kind of reticent to take him on. Actually, he was a he was a friend of my assistant manager, and um, he only wanted the job for a few months until he started working at um, uh, one of the major banks in in London. And I was, you know, no, no way. We're not training somebody up just for a few months so he can start off and become some banker. See, she's tough. <laughs> yeah. Well, you um, never need, you never know. You may need a loan later. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, so um, he, he comes and uh, comes and starts working with my assistant yeah. manager on his shifts. So, yeah, I said, you know, he only works your shifts. You can be responsible for training him. And then when he goes, you know, whatever. And, you know, no special treatment. And then one night, I think just about all of my staff phoned in sick and it was Friday night and we were packed um, and I needed somebody. And so I said to my assistant manager, can we call that guy that you've got working with you and see if he's available? Did you have a little crush on him already? No. Not even I, a little I, blush, I, not even like a just hard vaguely see, No, 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 not at all. No, <laughs> nothing. Yeah. No, nothing. Not until that You know, night. he's watching. Yeah, he's with yeah us. probably. <laughs> <laughs> but he came and he saved the day. Um, and we got through the night and then I got talking to him afterwards and found out we had a lot of common interests and that was the beginning boom. that was what 17 years ago yeah I we were married so. in well well no longer than that because we were married in 2000 and we met three years before that so, so he went through that whole master of wine insanity training yeah yeah he did he did yeah so Show us how you use the master of wine. Would you describe this in three words? Oh. I want to see everybody witnessing the yeah. movement of the arm. Did you notice that? With a passion glass. <laughs> the swirling. So you swirl I do that in with clouds. water now. <laughs> you, you, you do it not in clock.
clockwise, you do counterclockwise, right? Did you notice? I know. Do yeah. you know what? I'm, I'm ambidextrous. I can do it both ways. Oh. Um, and you know where I learned that was in Japan. I was told when I was in Japan and I was teaching at a wine school there um, by one of my students um, that it's rude to swirl the wine in the direction of the person who's sitting next to you because you could splash them oh. with the wine. Um, and so you must, you know, swirl it in the right direction. That's, I did not even know. So I became ambidextrous or, or I Great guess, idea. you know, be able to, to do the swirling in both directions yeah. um, because I didn't want to be rude. Uh, and, and yeah, so yes, swirling the glass. I do it in my sleep. I do it to water glasses. I do it to my daughter's milk. I do it to but everybody. When you professionally yes, taste, do you do it that much? When you professionally taste, I know that much. Yes, you have to, yeah, you, you have well. to, you have to release those aromas because otherwise if you just have the glass sitting there you know, and it's not moving, then aromas are just like, you know, they're, they're not volatile. Yeah, for they're sure. Not, they're not leaping up in your nose and telling you what they want to say. Um, so yes, definitely give it a swirl. With sparkling wines, you get you, you can kind of get the froth going, so it's maybe not as, as you know, good yeah. to do. But mm, it's got a nice toastiness to it. Doesn't toastiness. It? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And the red fruits, and the Very raspberries, apparent, and wild strawberries, and so you know this is burgundy pinot. Mm -hmm. something you love too mm -hmm. so now thank you for those kind words but Lisa tell us how was it then to migrate from the wine bar to becoming a you know in sales and then did you become a buyer after that I did I moved to Japan well the, my husband was meanwhile working his way up and up and up the ranks yes um in the banking world for sure um and his his dream had been to be a, a trader um, yeah. a, a bond trader um, and so he was given an opportunity um, by, he was working for a Japanese bank in London at the time, and he was working back office, basically um, doing compliance. Mm. And he was given his big break. And he said, look, we'll give you a chance. We've got an opening in Japan at our head office in Tokyo to become a bond trader. Are you wow. interested? And so, Ooh, you know, he, he came back home and here I just started at that time. I started working for um, a distributor of the Clico. Krug and in fact it was owned by um, LVMH and, and Baron Philippe Rothschild mm -hmm. um, and I was doing sales and marketing for them yes. for some of the best brands in the world and I had this dream job going in in London um, and uh, my husband came home and he said you know I've been offered an opportunity to be a bond trader in Japan and you know and I said you got to go for it we got to go I, I love said, it. You know, right away. No, no. You see the sense of entrepreneurship and adventure. And then the next morning I woke up and I went, I don't know Japanese. I've never been to Japan. I don't know anything about it. Was it your first time in Asia? Yeah. Because then you started a big uh, I mean, you know, it journey was in Asia. A huge leap of faith for me professionally because you know I was it, I was never gonna be someone who didn't work, who didn't pursue a career. Um, and so I knew that, you know, even when I moved to Japan, yes. you know, not working was not an option. Um, and so, you know, I, I went and, and had interviews with some people that I knew, you know, in the, the wine industry. The other great thing yeah. about the wine industry is it opens doors everywhere. For sure. You know, because it's a... And even as a lady in Japan, because it's not always easy, now it's much more open, but it was a few years ago. Was it, was it okay to... Yeah, it was it was and and part of it had to do with my unique skill set um and and this is you know how i presented myself to people is is saying you know look i've i've worked in many areas of the wine industry now in london and i think that you know i have this unique skill set where i can bring things that i've learned in london and yes. make them work here in tokyo to help better you know, buy and distribute. How could you say no when it's presented that way? <laughs> well, exactly. And, you know, again, yeah. my, somebody called my bluff and <laughs> yeah. there I was, you know, so I, I uh, kind of landed on my feet. I, I started working as a, a wine buyer for, for a wine importer in Japan. And, and that was a lot of fun. I got to go to Burgundy a lot because I love Burgundy. Um, and Thank I was you. I was buying a lot of Burgundy, um, Bordeaux, Italian sure. wines, um, a lot of 
Australia, New Zealand did very well in Japan as yeah. well, or still does very well in Japan. So it was fun. I got to travel a lot. And this really helped because I was, I was, you know, getting set to take my MW exam at this stage. So it gave me just a little bit more access yeah. to all of the wines of the world that I needed to taste. But also it got me traveling to all of these vineyards on buying trips so that I could, you know, you in the written part of the exam, the theories, you have to use a lot of examples. For sure. Uh, very specific examples. So, so, it was, so then you, you got the Masters of Wine. That was in 2000. 2008, yes, eight. when I eventually yeah. got it. In fact, by 2008, I was just moving to Singapore. Wow. Yeah, and so I was of just starting to work for Robert Parker. Well, before we go there, which is so exciting, is Lisa, you move for your heart, your first love, to London. You meet your husband, gets transferred in Asia, then you are in Asia for love, you follow him, and then you build an amazing career on your own. Pretty impressive. So you know how to bounce back very well. Yeah, but I think it's all about, you know, you, you don't know where the opportunities are going to come from. You just need to sort of, you know, I think, like I said, from the very beginning, follow your heart and, yes. and it, you know, the opportunities, they come and they might come in the, the weirdest packages sometimes. But how did you, <laughs> get, yeah, for sure. Now, how did you get attracted to basically write about wine? Because selling wine and buying wine for an importer is one thing. You know, you write for the internal team, you write maybe for the customers, but how, how do you do that? Well, that was the fun part because I think that was when my life really started to make sense. It came full circle. You know, I'd always been interested yeah. in reading and in writing and to be able to use all of those skills with the English degree, with the performing arts degree, with the playwriting, with everything, the creative side, the storytelling, and to be able to bring those back, yes. you know, and, and use them with my wine career. It was like the, those two worlds coming together. Do you actually believe in destiny? Uh, 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 I don't big question. Know. I think that I think that there's an element of destiny, but I think that, that you sometimes you you help to shape your own destiny. That's right. Yeah, by the people that you become, you know. Um, uh, and did not you that have I'm that split personality? But <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> referring to myself and <laughs> no, but I love the the balance between performing arts writing and then you come back as you said to one of your first love which is writing about wine so how did that work to start with robert parker i mean how does that function because for everybody knows the emperor of wine robert parker he is obviously managed his own program by himself forever mm. so for him to bring someone in as a member of the team must have been very, very difficult for him, and, and furthermore, you saw a way. So, mm -hmm. how did that work? Well, it was, it was, uh, Parker was at a stage where he had already brought in a few other reviewers um, to, to work for him. So, it, I wasn't the first um, outsider that came in. Um, I actually met Parker back in the early 2000s when I was in yes. Japan. Um, uh, he came and he was doing a um, uh, tour, um, doing some, some events in. in Tokyo and, and in yeah. Japan. And um, I'd been tasked as the wine buyer for this company to source some wines that he was interested in showing at these events. Um, and so that's how we initially met, you know, uh, and I was helping him out with the, the um, organization behind the scenes. Oh, you were? Okay. So you met and he and, saw how you tasted, obviously. Uh, well, yeah. And, and uh, it, it was, you know, not exactly smooth sailing, but, you know, I had all of these preconceptions about who he would be, you know, I'd, I'd met a lot of, you know, wine journalists yes. and wine critics in London. I knew what they were like. There were some big egos, <laughs> big egos. For sure. Um, and so, you know, I had this idea in my head that, that, that you know, Robert Parker was going to be like them, but on steroids, you know, like yeah. really sort of like demanding and egotistical and, I, I could not have been more wrong. I mean, mm -hmm. he's the most humble, down to earth, you know, I gracious agree. person. Extremely impressive in that sense. And and you know, uh, one of the things that that I really liked about him straight away was the fact that you know he listened to me. Here I was, this little nobody, you know, <laughs> and and you know, well, not I, nobody, someone with a lot of experience, and you went around the globe. 
Two, I'm sure that perspective was important. Traveling, right? Well, I guess, I guess, but, you know, really, I was a nobody. And, so and, how did he ask you to write? Well, he, we, we just, we stayed in touch. And when the opportunity came up and he had an, an opening, first he wanted me to write for a, a little blog on the website about what's happening in Asia, yeah. in the Asia wine scene. And then um, when some regions came up and he had an, uh, an opportunity, it, it, it just so happened that I was moving to Singapore um, as uh, he was looking for somebody new to do Australia and New Zealand. Oh. And the proximity helped a lot as well. Um, so, you know, obviously I left at the chance. I was like, yes. <laughs> um, and I, you know, doing Australia and New Zealand, I mean, I don't know if you've been, most amazing country. For sure. You know, just. Well, and for everybody to know, the first time I met Lisa was at a fabulous wine advocate seminar you did in Napa. And I was oh, in the room right. as a uh, person very interested in the subject that was Australia. And you were amazing. And I went to introduce myself because I said, not only she knows how to write about wine, but she knows how to speak about wine, which is obviously two different things. Now, to your success, of course. Cheers. Controversial question. What do you think about ranking in wine? Ranking in wine is something I have to do every single day. I know. <laughs> so, this is, you did that as a wine bar, you did that as a buyer. So in those days where you were ranking important. wine with points, were you doing hearts, were you doing stars? It was, I was, um, when I was working in Japan, in fact, my, my employer asked me to use the 100 point scale. So really? that's where I became comfortable with it. Um, and, it, you know, it's, it was hard because you come from a stage when you're, you know, a, a newbie to wine where you, ranking is just something that's like this this you know hazy concept why would you even want to do it to you know okay we need to start to get very specific about where this sits qualitatively next to its yes, peers yes um and you know it, for for that alone it is an incredibly useful tool um so but you know it you can't use it alone that's right. You, you need to have a description of the style and, and the character of the wine as well. To and do you always have the same uh, discipline as you taste? When, in other words, you know, for me, I, write, I, I rank all our wines we make on 20. Mm -hmm. So I have, I rank all You're the way up to You're still on four. that 20 point scale? <laughs> well, it's Alexis Lichine. Max Ligli's, you know, the old French school. Yeah, I know. Where I know. we have five I used, I used to use the 20 points. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, so explain, maybe share, if you, if you don't mind, a little bit about what's your intellectual process on how you, you rank a wine and, and how, you, um, how you do it, in fact. Well, you know, before you even consider ranking wine seriously, you, you need to build up a huge mental library of wines okay. in your head. You need to, to hold in your head all of these wines that you've tasted before, tens of thousands of wines. Um, because basically, whenever you give a score, you're evaluating this wine against That's all right. of those other wines. And usually you narrow it down to a peer group. Say you're, you're tasting um, a Napa Cabernet. Uh, and you've got, you know, Bordeaux in your mind. Maybe you've got, you know, I don't know, Margaret River. You've got you know, all the great Cabernets of the world yes. in your mind. And you've also got a bigger picture of, of red wine in general and, and wine, you know. And when you're, you're considering, you know, very carefully where that fits, you know, is it a 95? Is it a 98? Is it a 92? It needs to slot in with yes. all of those other wines that are of that score um, very, very neatly. That's right. Um, and, you know, that's the beauty of... And of, you obviously do that very well. It's like, you have to be witness. quick, too. Yeah. You have to be quick. And that's why it, it helps, you know, if you've, you've had a, a job before where you've been using the 100-point scale because yes. really sort of getting into your But head. on your 100, you slice it... 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 in fives. No. So you multiply by five, the 20. We start at 50. The 20 point, yeah. Okay, you, you start at You 50. get 50 just for being alcohol made from grapes. Okay, Oh, well, that's a good start. God, I wish my studies, I, I started at 50. Yeah, I wouldn't I have F all the time. Uh -huh. But now, uh, Lisa, spending time with you tasting, because this is really great, because we get to sit down. And we don't see what you write, but... I look at your mind, you have an incredible memory. 
So how do you, and I always noticed women, meaning my mother, my lovely wife and others, have incredible olfactive memory. Mm -hmm. hein, en français, la mémoire olfactive. And we say women. Ooh, you got a brace for it and everything. <laughs> yeah, they, well, women typically are, are all the male studies, superior to men on that. How did you practice your memory? Because you remember a wine that you've tasted the same year at the same time. And I'm very impressed in that. So what advice do you give and how do you practice that memory? Well, it's what I do with my daughters now. Um, and I, I, I'm not just for wine. I mean, yes. it's not a skill, you know, just if you're thinking about a wine career, I think it's a great life skill to have, yes. to have a scent memory. Um, and, you know, I do encourage people because we, we know that, you know, your scent memory is very closely located to where you retrieve, for example, a foreign language from that you might learn in your yeah. mind. Um, and young people from a very young age are much better at taking this information in and, you know, locking it away into long-term memories. So the sooner you can get young people yes. smelling things. So I, to my, my daughters, I'll walk into a room and I'll smell something. I'll say, what's that smell? Yes. I'll say lavender, roses, right. or lemon. Do you guide her to say, because my grandmother used to do the same. She forced me to write on a piece of paper the orchard, so fruit a vegetable, a flower, and overall a scent. And she would say, Jean-Charles, give me four ideas and then you can try the wine. <laughs> Are you doing that with your daughter as well? I don't do that, no, no. I think, you know. How old is she now? Uh, well, I've got two daughters. I've got one that's just turned 15 and one that's just turned six. Um, yes, yes. So um, and for, for the 15 year old, she's actually got a very good scent memory. And that's something that I used to do from, with her from when she was very yeah. young. Um, and actually, I think it, it gives her a much better palate, you know, even mm -hmm. food. She, she's very, very good at, at cooking and, and um, analyzing dishes and knowing the ingredients that are in those wow. dishes um, from doing this. You have a future um, chef. Yeah, I hope. <laughs> That'd be nice. Now, you mentioned something very important, which I've witnessed you obviously do. You go fast. Mm -hmm. So you said from your mind to paper, it's a quick process. So what's your process? So you smell, you taste. The, the master of wine was genius for doing that, actually. It makes you very fast. Okay. Um, so you need to, to sort of be able to analyze a wine very quickly. Um, and sometimes, you know, you get a great wine in a glass. This is a great wine. Thank you. <laughs> you get a great wine yes. in a glass. And you, you know that you need to take a little bit more time over it because there's more to unravel in there. Mm -hmm. um, and then you get quite a, a simple wine. Um, there's there's not a lot to say, you know, and and you 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 never I always say to the reviewers, you know, when when we're talking about the process, you don't make things up, you know. That's if, right. If it's not there, don't talk about it, you know. Uh, but I love your choice of words as well. So how how do you process from your ranking to the words and you tie them together? Because. You told me once you don't go back to your notes that much. No, I try to read, read them, uh, sorry, write them as complete as possible. So wow. there might be like a spelling mistake or a typo or something yeah. like that. But I write them as complete as possible. I, 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 really, I don't have time to go back and yeah, edit. You sure. know, we just need to get the report out and move on. Um, one of the big things for us is that the reports need to be timely as well because they need to come out either just as the wines are hitting the markets or before the wines are hitting the market so that people can make buying decisions. Um, so yeah, doing it, it quickly is, is essential. Um, but once you've tasted so many wines, it does, I, I swear I write tasting notes in my sleep. So <laughs> to give all our friends a sense of how many wines are the most you could taste in a day, how many is that? Oh, um, you know, you can write, yeah, or yeah, I have, um, analyzed, judged 200 wines in a day Oof. when you're doing wine judging. When you're writing That's tasting notes, it's different because your your brain needs to get around writing all yes. of this analysis down. And, you know, more than palate fatigue, I think you get brain fatigue. Your brain gets tired of essentially translating, translating what you're, you're tasting in the glass into words on the paper. That's um, brilliant. Yeah. yeah. And, and you, you feel like, so for me, I try not to, I mean, if I'm really busy and I've got like a really busy day, say I'm doing the Bordeaux Primers and you have to pack a lot into maybe yeah. a two week trip. 
um, and you're, you're boom, 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 then you might, you know, in, in one of your big tastings do up to 150 wines in a day. Which is so much. It's a lot. It's a lot. And some of those wines I do, you know, if I don't feel like I got a good sense of the wine, then I will um, uh, come back to it. And that's that's the good thing, I suppose, about, you know, if you're, if you're in the region, you're in Bordeaux, you can always swing by that chateau again yeah. or, or ask a merchant or a negotiator. Too many of samples. Yes. Yeah. So now you did something quite amazing in 2015. And I'd love for you to tell us about it because you wrote a book. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Well, it's exciting. Nobody's read it, though. <laughs> oh, you did. oh, I doubt that. You did many other amazing things. Did I give course. you a copy yet? Not yet. Oh, but man. But maybe I have one. I will give you several copies. I'm well, so you're sorry. going to have to sign one so we officially yeah. frame it. Yes, yes. Because it's a book which is very unusual. And not many people obviously can write it because it's from your perspective as a wine critique. So... Explain the book to everyone. Well, it's a, it's a very personal um, journey, I suppose, but it's also something that was important for me to get down for myself on paper. It's about wine quality. That's right. Um, so it's, it's all about the elements of wine quality and exactly how those can be recognized in a glass. And it gets a little bit technical in places. Mm -hmm. uh, probably gets a little controversial in places. For sure. Particularly when I talk about wine faults um, and that, most wine faults that we have um, exist within this sort of gray area, whether it's good or bad. Yes. Just about every wine that you taste has a, a fault to some level, whether you can detect it or not, you know, whether it's above that detection threshold. Yes. Um, you know, of course. volatile acidity. You know, yeah. there are acceptable, undetectable levels of volatile acidity in everyone. Yes. Um, so, you know, it, it gets a little bit technical about mm -hmm. things like that. Um, but then I think it, it also goes a little bit philosophical in areas. Yes. You know, talking about the Zen of wine. Um, well, which I love because your choice of words, you know, Lon, a good friend of ours just mentioned, you know, the words are Hi, important. Lon. <laughs> <laughs> the words are important. And it's very true. You you take your background in literature and obviously the arts really help you as well to translate a score into words. Because I, I read words more than, than a ranking. Yeah. And oh I yeah. Get passionate about you words. should. You should. You know, re really, you should read the words first and say, "Ooh, yeah, that's that's the style of wine I really mm -hmm. like." Or I don't even like. No, no, that's not for me. That that's not my style of wine. But you know, the words will tell you whether you're going to like it or not. That's it. You know, and then you can look at where it ranks next to its peers for that. You know, style. That's right. So basically, you know, you want uh, uh, um, elegant, fresh, perfumed. Um, uh, complex wine that is, you know, a 95 point experience or 92, it also depends on what you can afford. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, Correlation to price. Yes, for sure. yes. But it, we, we don't look at prices at all when we're doing the rankings, when we're doing the descriptions, yes. you know, everybody is, is on the same playing field when it comes to that. So talking about playing field, where do you see today this wonderful world of wine critiques, wine ranking, within all the new context of social media and people as well aggregating comments from consumers mm -hmm. and, and all that. What is your your view? I've, I've never asked you that question, I always wanted to. Yeah, well, it's a good question. I mean, it's a question we ask ourselves a lot, yes. you know, as, as a, you know, a critical publication, because now, you know, there's so many websites where, you know, people consumers can come together and talk about their wine experiences. That's right. And I love that. I think that's great. Um, we are there to provide, you know, an expert's opinion. Um, our, our, given all of the wines that we've tasted, all of the um, expert experience that we've had in our careers, and to say, you know, this is how we consistently that's describe it. this wine and consistently, because consistency is everything. That's what, what we, we look for. Um, and then, you know, we do this as a full-time job. We, we taste a lot of yeah. wines that, you know, we don't recommend. Yes. Um, you know, and we say that in the tasting notes as well. There, there are negative reviews For as sure. well as positive reviews. Um, and, you know, we, we kiss a lot of frogs so that you guys can find a prince or a princess <laughs> so. well, that, but that's fantastic and, and i think it's very healthy for any worlds in general to have organization and great wine critiques or food critiques to keep you in check and balance you know it's the same with 
I always say with the organic certification and biodynamic certification, I love them because they come and audit and tell us mm -hmm. what we've done right and what we could improve. And life is about improvement. Yeah. And, you know, if perfection was found. Now, always the, the key challenge for people is wine is subjective. Wine is so subjective. How could mm -hmm. you say it's worth this and that? How do you react to that comment? Um, Talking about subjective, I love it. You know, I'm going to go again, you. the more professional you become and the more you rank, uh, go up the ranks of, of expertise and experience in these things, you know, you, you do learn to put your own preferences yeah. aside. I give a lot of very high scores and I've even given hundred point wines to ones that, you know, I personally wouldn't buy, not interested in drinking. It's not about that. That's great to hear. It's about accurately describing that style of wine and saying, this is a perfect, flawless example of right. this style of wine. Um, and, and, you know, this is a, some, some of my favorite wines are not the highest scoring wines. Yes. Those are the ones that I go for another glass of at the end of the day, <laughs> end of a tasting day. Um, and, and, you know, really that, again, going back to the tasting notes, that's what it's about. People, you know, can, can look through those. And I work very hard yes. to describe very accurately what people can expect, not just in a technical way, but also the personality of the wine. I think it's very it. interesting to bring out that personality of the wine. Yes. What what does it evoke for you when you taste it? You know, what do you think? And you know, so many times uh, people will read the same description. You know, when they're tasting the wine, they're like, "Yeah, I see that." So it's almost the job of the tasting note as well to to bring something a little bit more to the experience. I love it. Very well said, and I I commend you for that because. You know, you you really not only have that within you, and at the same time, you transcribe it in such a way that is very compelling. And and well, let's have a toast to this. Cheers. I, I chose this wine because I think you are exactly that a knockout. Oh, cool. I love it. I typically <laughs> use it in boxing, but I, I'm really impressed by your path because I deal tremendously with people in the trade with great ability, but I love how you've navigated from, you know, arts and literature to evolving arts, to do the masters, to do now the wine advocate, to writing your own book, which I think many people should get, you know, and will post a book so everybody can really uh, obtain it because I think it's very- It's available important. on our website. Yeah. Great. Yeah. And then my big question is, as I look at your incredible history and chronology of life, what makes you who you are today? Ooh, I t you know, it's- a, I, No, no, no question submitted before. It's on the spot. <laughs> you know, I think that, that you know, it's, it is everything, you know, the, the, the great quote is, you know, we are the sums of all the moments of our lives. That's a good uh, quote. And, you know, I think that there, there is an element of that. Uh, like I said, you know, that, that moment when I was given an opportunity to come full circle and bring, you know, my, my love of, of literature and writing into my love of wine and to, to bring those together um, was just, you know, wonderful. Yes. Um, and, and yeah. And where did that come from? Do you think within your upbringings, within your education, within, you know, I mean, who would have thought right from Maine to where you are now, is there anything that you think defined that? Nope. <laughs> did not see that happening. Did not see it coming. Um, I love it. you know, and that, I think that that's the thing, you know, sometimes you can get too blinkered, um, yes. you know, into sort of thinking, no, no, this is what I have to be. This is where I have to go. That opportunity over there, I don't see that where that's going to take me. And sometimes you do have to, yeah. to take that leap of faith and say, I have no idea where that's going to take me. Um, but it seems like a really good opportunity. Um, and I'm just going to go for that's it. That's brilliant. Wow. So what inspires you? What inspires me? Um, Besides wine, of course. <laughs> We hope it still does. It does. Wine, wine always inspires me. Um, and no, it, it it really, truly does inspire me every night. Um, but I think as well, words, words inspire me. Mm -hmm. uh, words are powerful, um, you know, whether they're written words or spoken words. And, you know, being able to um, create and shape 
stories around wines um, to be able to convey the stories that you see in a glass yes. of wine. I think, you know, that is is inspiring to me. Now, you're part of a great organization now because the Wine Advocate, uh, Mr. Parker retired, gave you the helm as editor-in-chief, and now it's part of a larger group, Michelin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Michelin, I should say. Maybe. <laughs> Michelin. Michelin. <laughs> so, phenomenal food uh, critique, restaurant, I mean... All my life, I've seen my parents, whether we go to a one star or to a great rank brasserie, mm -hmm. the Michelin guide was always in the car or on mm -hmm. the desk. Would you see yourself uh, doing food too? No. <laughs> so liquid. No, stick is... to what I know. I, I, you know, I'm in awe of, you know, what the inspectors do um, yeah. uh, behind the scenes at the Michelin guide. Um, and, you know, it's a lot of, like we do, you know, people always say, oh, you're a wine critic, oh, this is so wonderful, until, you know, it tastes 150 wines. Yeah, it's, very, it's very tiring. <laughs> but it's the same with the critics, you yeah. know, to, to have to go to several different restaurants every night when they're, they're doing a, a, a city or a region, you know, and, and you know, analyzing and overanalyzing and, and, you know, really sort of, you know, understanding this this cuisine within the context you know it, it's it's a lot of work um yes. and so you know although i do feel i have a very good palate um my palate is not trained to do cuisine to do cuisine huh. uh, well, would you want to share a few words on this wine? Just three Ooh, it words. It is a knockout, you know? Just words. Um, <laughs> As you're so good with words. Yeah, it's rich, it's powerful, it's spicy, it's mm. bold, Ooh. it's got um, energy in it, doesn't it? It's all about you. Uh, is it? <laughs> well, I really thought I wanted to bring a wine that I thought really represent who you are. And I'm, as you know, we've been knowing each other for many years now, and I love the moment we spend, and I think everybody should see who you are as, as you showed us. And this is fabulous to see what is behind this great, fabulous lady that came from Maine and did all this. Oh, thank now, you. would you be willing with everyone to share your passion? My passion? If it's not wine, but I'm, I know you have many more than just wine, so. <laughs> It could be education. It could be children. Whether having time for it, yeah. No, it is. It is like my family. Absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, it's the, the first image that popped in my mind when you said that was the kids. Yes. Um, uh, my daughters, but also, you know, we we've um, settled down here in Napa. We um, just bought a little farm in Carneros. We have some chickens. We have some goats. We have so excited. <laughs> dogs. We have dogs. We have a rabbit. Um, we have, uh, yeah. So it, it's really about family and home. Yes. And, you know, having that grounding. We've, we've traveled so much. For sure. Um, and From we, cities to big cities. Yeah. To, so you're back to the source in many ways. Maine, yeah. Countryside back it's to nice the countryside. To to put down stakes and say, look, this is this is it. I mean, we're we're going to build something here, and and you know the the family has its roots here. You know? And you feel this is home now, Napa Valley. Absolutely, absolutely. I love very it. Very excited. Yeah. When we were we were leave, leaving Singapore, and we thought very hard about where we wanted to go, and we traveled so many places um, uh, by then, and we had so many choices: Australia, New Zealand, yes. you know, so many beautiful places in the world. But you know, I I just couldn't think of a place yes. better than Napa. For sure. <laughs> now, passion is family. Is there a dream? Because it seems, and everybody listening is probably thinking the same way as I do, Ooh, you've it. kind of achieved the dream <laughs> of so many from your phenomenal history, which is great. Is there a dream that you're willing to share you have in your head that you haven't achieved yet? Yes. I bet, oh, Ooh, so I'm toast many. to the fact that you sure. want to share it. Thank you. <laughs> well, so many, so share many. No. Dreams no. with a big S. Uh, no. Because um, I have so many S's in mind. No, I... I I would love one day to write a novel. I would love to. Have you started? No. Something <laughs> tells me it's going to be even before the novel a play. Because you're so good at actors and mm. different. I like dialogue a lot. Yes. Yeah. 
I like to write dialogue. I think in dialogue. I think I'm in yes. Plato's dialectic. For sure. <laughs> yeah, the best, isn't it? Yeah. That's why I would see you doing the, the novel. Very cool. Mm -hmm. And is the land you own inspires you to do so? I think so. It's really a matter of time, you know. Yeah. It's just so many um, responsibilities uh, with the, the reviewing, with the yes. editor in chief role, with the family with everything, you know, it's really about sort of, I think one day I'll, uh, maybe many years from now, I'll settle down and I'll, I'll write a, a book. That'll be maybe my only too. book. <laughs> no, well, the first one is great too. And it's wonderful for people to be able to, to read it. Now, any message you want to share to everyone as the time we live in, where we are in the 21st century in 2020, any message of encouragement, any message of hope, any mm. message that you wish to share to the world at large? I don't know. I just, uh, you know, uh, just the way that, that you, you know, I live my life, you know, just to, to be kind to everybody, to be open-minded, to be embracing, to be inclusive, yes. you know, because that's that's how you progress in the world that's how we all progress for sure you know? that's how we you know learn and we develop yes we grow we grow stronger um but we can't do it alone um and we can't do it with people who are just like us we need all of the wonderful differences of the world um and you know we're, we're going through difficult times at the the moment yes you know and it, it's hard it's hard to watch the news nowadays yes it's heart-wrenching sometimes um but you know i just think every day just just getting up and being positive and and being kind to other people and being yes. opening and open-minded and 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 helping wherever you can when, when yeah. you know you see somebody and you're in a position to help help more a message Dear friends, what to add? <laughs> Lisa is giving me shivers of inspiration, excitement, <laughs> dreams. It, it's very true. So well said. So unusually, I'm not going to add much. I'm not going to give Lisa a French kiss today because we have to social distance. Yes. <laughs> and her husband may <laughs> short my <laughs> account <laughs> because he's a good bone trader. And um, dear friends, I want to thank you so much for being with us. It's Lisa, thank you for accepting. Thank you for having me. Like I said, I thought you'd never ask. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Why do I ask Lisa? And she said, I'm going to be done early July after the Bordeaux tasting. Yes, just finished. And, uh, you know, we delighted you moved to Napa. She is down the road. And we, we'd love to have Lisa at some stage to come to some of our wonderful retreat to do a speech or to inspire not only ladies. We do retreats? We do some fun <laughs> retreats. Okay. And, you know, you've been such a great inspiration, Lisa. I want to thank you. So many great comments of everyone. Lisa, thank you for being who you are, for doing what you're doing, because everybody needs to know coming after Robert Parker, Lisa is the editor-in-chief. She's the big boss. It's a very difficult position to fill on someone who founded a business, and she's doing so well and amplifying the voice of not only great wines and at the same time, you know, all of us from every wine region and doing such a great job at it. So Lisa, congratulations for your audacity, your personality, your pugnacity, <laughs> and your sense of entrepreneurship because you are the example that so many of us need to follow. Oh, thank you. Merci beaucoup. And we won't do social, we'll do the kiss on the cheeks. Mm -hmm. Thank you, dear friends. See you soon. Bye.